if I give you the backstory behind this, uh, there's different ways to succeed in real estate and all of them are good, right? Brian Buffini is gonna tell you work by referral, right? Uh, Michael Mayer is uh, lead with gratitude, uh, generosity generation, uh, be a connector uh, and build your business by referral. Okay, Mike Ferry, <clears throat> He's gonna teach you how to hardcore prospect for sell by owners, expired circle prospecting, cold calls, and get the list appointment. Uh, he is absolutely 180 degrees the opposite of my strategy. My strategy is build relationships, go on appointments, meet with people, and don't judge away opportunity. In other words, if I'm talking to a for sale by owner and, I'm, and they say, I'm never gonna list my home, you're wasting your time if you come over here. Uh, Mike Ferry teaches some really great scripts to get around that and get to the coaching appointment. You guys here, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just telling you the differences, they both work. Uh, and if I'm being coached by Mike Ferry, I'm not going on that appointment because it's not a list appointment. Now, me, this four o'clock worker would five be better for you. I'm never going to list with a real estate agent. Cool. I want to pop by and take a look at your home just in case I can potentially bring you an offer. And if I'd had a full price offer on your home today, would you want me to bring you the offer? You know, I, I noticed your listing came off the market. And just out of curiosity, are you still interested in selling your home? No, I'm not. Go away. I hate real estate agents, right? And that's not me, by the way. That's the seller. I'm scripting both sides here. <laughs> and my response to that would be, sure. Before I go, just one question. <clears throat> A real estate agent showed up at your front door today with full price offer closing in 30 days and you knew it would close. What would you do? Now, you're probably going to hear a version of, I'd sell my house. Cool. That's exactly why we should get together. I'd like to pop by and just take a look at your home for 10 or 15 minutes so I could potentially bring you that offer. Does today at 2 o'clock work or would tomorrow at 4 be better for you? Do you have an offer? You know, that's a great question. And I won't know until I see your home. And that's exactly why we should get together. I'm available tomorrow at two or would four be better for you? You know, just out of curiosity, if we were to meet, do mornings, afternoons, evenings, or weekends work best for you? Well, I got to fork at four o'clock. Cool. I'm looking at my calendar and I've got tomorrow at 4.30 or would Friday at five be better for you? Now, <clears throat> these are all scripts, right? And they're simple scripts. You know, that was his other comment. He says, John, I'm reading your book and I just can't believe how simple your scripts are. You know, it's funny whenever somebody says that to me, I'm not sure if it's a compliment or if I should be offended. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they are. And Tika, good morning. And they are. And let's take a break. Does it, and talk to me, does it need to be complicated? No. Absolutely not. No. Well, I don't know. Does blah no. work just as well as blah, blah, blah? Yeah. yeah. Yes. There you go. And, and Diane Kokoska taught me that. Why use blah, blah, blah when blah works? <clears throat> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whiteboard this and I'm gonna show you the path from the call to the appointment, to the follow-up, to getting the listing. Would that be okay with everybody? Yeah, Cool, I actually got a lot of yeses on that. That's awesome. I was gonna do it anyways. <laughs> All right. Guys, this is being recorded. I encourage you, I encourage you, I encourage you. Go back and watch it over and over and over again until you've absolutely internalized this information. All right, I'm working 50 weeks 
five days a week, which means I'm working 250 days a year. I'm having 20 conversations a day because that's my standard. Now your standard might be 10, it might be five, whatever your standard is, it's a standard. It's not a goal. If it's 10, then you don't stop at nine, eight or seven because it's close enough. Hit your standard. Now, contact is a conversation. It's a two-way conversation. It can be phone mail, knocking on the door. Phone mail, that's funny. <laughs> it can be a phone call, knocking on the door. Uh, it could be two-way communication via social media, text message, email. It's a two-way conversation. That's the point. Now, that means I'm having 5,000 conversations in a year. Now, <clears throat> let's say one of those conversations is to a for sale by owner, just to pick an example. So phone call, uh, Diane, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty. I notice you're selling your home by owner. Just curious, if I had an offer on your home, would you want me to bring you the offer? Yeah, but I don't wanna work with an agent. Sure, of course, I understand. And if I had a full price offer, you'd want me to bring you the offer, correct? Yeah, but I don't want to pay commission. Okay, correct. It's a tie down, right? Yes. And no worries, Diane. When I bring you an offer, you share with me what you feel I'm worth. And if I'm able to work for that, we've got a deal. And if I need to give up money in order to make the deal work, I will because I'm a deal maker, not a deal breaker. Now, does four o'clock or five o'clock work better for you? In order for me to pop by, it means it's a short visit. Make sure you use those words because one of the reasons you're hearing no is they think you want to move in with them. <laughs> in order for me to pop by and take a look at your home so I could potentially bring you an offer. Now pay attention to my words. Words matter. I didn't ask if I had a buyer because I don't want to hear later on, where's the buyer you told me you had? Or John, you said you had a buyer. What I said, leave you, is if I had an offer, would you want me to bring you the offer? Now, Diane, I'd like to pop by. Does four o'clock or five o'clock work better for you? Okay, five o'clock. Okay, Diane said yes. She's in my funnel. She's in my pipeline. This is my opportunity funnel. And it's a standard then I'm gonna add 250 people to this funnel over the next 12 months because it's one every day. It's a standard. Find somebody today that is thinking of selling their home or possibly would sell their home sometime in the next six months. Circle prospecting call. Clarissa, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty. Thank you for taking my call. The reason I called today is we sold a home in your neighborhood, which is great news. Mm -hmm. Our challenge now is we still have buyers that are looking for great homes like yours. And I was just curious, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home? Script, write it down. Don't say that to the seller, it'd be weird. Um, say me, but probably not for another six months. Well, John, me, but... Not for six months. Okay, I found opportunity. Now, is that gonna happen with every call? Say no. No. <clears throat> if I talk to 20 people today, is one of them possibly gonna say yes to that? Say yes. Yes. And it's okay if it's no, because I'm gonna go look somewhere else. I'm just looking for one person today that says yes. Now, Clarissa is a face-to-face -face appointment, correct? All right, let's go back to the for sale by owner. The purpose of the call is to get an appointment. Write it down. The purpose of the call is to get an appointment. The purpose of the appointment <clears throat> is to build a relationship, to demonstrate, please write this down, to demonstrate that you care about them, that they can trust you, and that you know what you're doing. To demonstrate, to convey that you care about them, they can trust you and you know what you're doing. And then the last purpose of the appointment is to look for opportunity. It is not to turn it into a listing appointment. 
I have so many real estate agents come up to me and say, John, I went on the appointment and it didn't go really well. I'm like, what do you mean? It didn't go really well. Well, they're not ready to list their house. <laughs> okay. I, my standard was two appointments a day. Pay attention. Two appointments a day. That means 10 a week or 40 a month. Now I'm going, I'm putting 480 people in this pipeline every year, right? Right? Never in 15 years did one of them turn into a listing appointment on the spot. It always happened in the follow-up. Always. So the purpose of the, the appointment is to build a relationship, to convey that you care about them, they can trust you, you know what you're doing, and to look for opportunity. Now, opportunity shows up as frustration. I'll give you an example. You know, my house has been on the market for two months, and I'm really not getting as many showings as I thought I would get. Frustration. Thought I would have sold it by now. Frustration. I'm moving to Atlanta to start a new job in 90 days and really thought my house would have been sold by now. Frustration. Opportunity. I'm going to share with you in a moment what to say when you hear opportunity. All right. Now, how do we convey we care about them? How do we convey that they can trust us? And how do, they how do we convey that we know what we're doing? All right. I'm going to share with you a step-by-step -step process. Number one, call ahead of time and confirm the appointment. <clears throat> Diane, this is John Dietz. Uh, following up as promised, calling to confirm our appointment today at 4 p.m. We're confirmed. I'll be there exactly at 4 p.m. unless I run into traffic. And if I do, I'll call you on my way. When you show up late, do you care about them? Say no. If you don't call and confirm the appointment, do you care about them? Say no. Can they trust you? Say no. All right. Now, when I meet Diane at the front door, knock, knock, knock. I have a notebook in my hand, a pen, business card, and that's it. I didn't bring anything to list her house. If I start showing her comparables and start telling Diane everything I could do to sell her home, and I'm here to preview it so I could potentially bring her an offer, and I'm trying to turn this into a listing appointment, can Diane trust me? No. Say no. Now, I'm gonna greet Diane at the front door. Knock, knock, knock. Diane opens the door. Hi, Diane. I'm John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty. We had an appointment at 4 p.m. and it's 4 p.m. May I come in? Sure. Script. Write it down. The moment I walk in the front door, Tika, thank you so much for inviting me to your home. Wow. You have an absolutely beautiful home. I'm super excited to be here. Before I take one more step, would you like me to take off my shoes? Sure. Script. Write it down. Now, Clarissa, what I would love for you to do is to take me on a tour of your home. I'm going to ask lots of questions and I'm going to take lots of notes. I'm pointing to my notebook. I'm showing Clarissa. I'm going to take lots of notes because this is the information I'm going to use to help you sell your home. Script. Write it down. Pay attention to the embedded commands. You listen, you heard about neuro-linguistic programming yesterday in bold. Embedded commands are neuro-linguistic, I can't say that word, neuro-linguistic neuro programming, NLP, how's that? All right, this is the information I'm gonna use to help you sell your home, sell your home, sell your home. Don't do that, I think you're weird. All right. I'm gonna help. Right now, as you tour their home, take notes out loud. Here's what that means. Beautiful hardwood floors, vaulted ceilings, crown molding. Holy cow, you have an absolutely beautiful kitchen. I love your kitchen. Like their home, write it down. Don't be Billy Bob from Ego Realty. Billy Bob from Ego Realty shows up and says, oh my gosh, purple, what were you thinking? <laughs> This has got to go. Fuzzy wallpaper? Seriously? What'd you do? Decorate this in the 70s? Am I going to find the Brady Bunch here somewhere? Where are they? That's what Billy Bob from Ego Realty does. Don't be Billy Bob. 
by the way, there is no Billy Bob. I've had people come up to me and say, who's Billy Bob? <laughs> I made him up. Okay. <clears throat> like their home. You are not there to stage it. Do not point out anything that's wrong with it. Like their home. Script. Clarissa, as we're touring your home, if you would please share with me what you love most about your home. What we have found is the next buyer will probably buy your home for the same reasons you did. You know, also, uh, if you don't sell, if you're not selling, if you're staying, point out the next improvements you would make. Now, what that does is it gives them an opportunity to share with you what needs to be updated. Now, they can talk about the purple paint and the fuzzy wallpaper. You didn't. They did. You guys getting this? Yes. Is it good stuff? Good stuff. Okay. All right. Now, ask questions. Ask questions that a buyer would ask, like, how old is your roof? Uh, this is a really big house. How many AC units do you have? If they're on the water, what access do you have to the ocean? Are there any fixed bridges that I have to go under? Or do I have direct access to the Atlantic Ocean? Ask questions that a buyer would ask. All right, exit. Standing at the front door, critically important. Vivian, before I leave, is it okay if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes. Yes, awesome. You know, in my experience, most homeowners that are selling their home by owner have a game plan for how long they're going to sell by owner before they hire a professional like me. Is it okay if I ask you what your game plan is? She says 30 days. Cool. Thank you. It is my goal to bring an offer to you and help you get it sold in the next 30 days. It's a beautiful home and I'm positive you're going to sell it. Script, write it down. Now, guys, I've asked people that question on a Saturday, and I've had people say Monday. If we don't sell it this weekend, I'm listing it Monday. <laughs> now, if I didn't ask that question, are they going to volunteer? Hey, John, before you leave, just so you know, we're listing the house on Monday. Are they going to volunteer that? No. Ask. You'll get an answer. I promise. Even I'm never going to list it is an answer. Write it down. By the way, it's not true, but write it down anyways. Now, Vivian, if I could, let me ask you one more question. You know, in my experience, again, most people who are selling by owner are selling by owner in order to save on the fee. Is that the reason you're selling your home by owner? Absolutely. Cool. And when I scheduled the appointment, you shared with me that if a realtor were to bring you an offer, you would pay them 3%. Correct? Correct? Awesome. So the difference between selling your home by owner and working with a professional like me is just 3%, not 6%. Yes. Correct? Correct. Awesome. Nice Drop a bomb. You're dropping a bomb. Just walk away. Now, that doesn't mean leave without saying goodbye. You're planting seeds. What I want to happen is I want Vivian later. <clears throat> to have a conversation with herself. Now the conversation is gonna go something like, selling my home $500,000, I was thinking it was gonna cost me $30,000 to hire a realtor. That's a lot of money, it's a waste of money, I'll sell this myself. However, you know what John said makes sense. It's really only gonna cost me 15,000 because I'm more than likely gonna pay a buyer's agent who brings me a buyer so I'm already spending 15, it's just another $15,000. Change the way you look at things, things you look at change. People will not change their mind, but they will make a new decision based on new information. All right, last thing before you go, Vivian, I'm super good at follow-up. Now what that means is I will stay in touch with you. I'm super persistent, but I'm not pushy. Is that okay? That's okay. Cool. Now, when I call her over and over and over and over and over again, did I tell her I was going to do that? Say yes. yes. All right. Now, <clears throat> the rest of the formula. I made a call. I got an appointment. The appointment leads to follow-up. This is where success happens. Day one, follow-up. 
Diane, thank you for the opportunity to see your home. You have an absolutely beautiful home. And I just wanted to check in and say thank you and ask if you have any questions. I uh, know, good. All is good. Uh, I'll be in touch with you if I have any questions and I'll give you a call again in maybe four or five days. Say okay. okay. Cool. We don't have time to go overcome a lot of objections. <laughs> All right, before the week is up, I'm going to make another call. So two calls in the first week. Now, week two, make a call. Week three, follow up. Week four, follow up. So once a week for the first four weeks. By the way, I know you're asking, John, what do you say? Uh, one, it's in my book. <laughs> Two, uh, hey, Maria, John Dietz, following up as promised. How are you doing? Great. Cool. Is there anything I could do for you today? Um, say no. No. <laughs> okay. And is your home still available? Yes. Okay. Have you had any offers? I have. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, there are not that great offers. Mm -hmm. Hmm, is a script. Write it down. Hmm, is a script. Write it down. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'll call you again next week, and I'm a phone call away if there's anything you need. I don't see opportunity yet. Remember, opportunity shows up as frustration. The moment I hear frustration, hey, Maria, Hi. you know, it sounds like you might be thinking that it's time to hire a professional like me. If I could show you how I could sell your home for more money in less time, would you be interested in seeing how I could do that? Okay. All right, what do I have? Say a list appointment. I have a list appointment. Now, what if she said, I don't want to list my home? Listen closely to what I asked. Am I asking her for a listing appointment? No, I'm not. What I'm asking, Maria say, I don't want to list my home. I don't want to do okay, you know, Maria, I get it. And, and here's my question. Are you curious? Are you at least curious what I could do to sell your home for more money in less time? You don't have to hire me, but are, would you like to get together and see what I would do? Yes, do I have the money? Not at all. Matter of fact, here's my promise to you. I will never ask you to list my home, list your home. Yeah. Never. I will never ask you. And I'm going to keep that promise. Why? Because she's going to ask me eventually. She's going to say, okay, John, I know you said, and what would you do to sell my home? Mm -hmm. Write it down. Fact. All right. Now, <clears throat> month two, make a call. Month three, make a call. Month four, make a call. By the way, every call is the same. Now, depending on how long they're there, eventually it might just be... Hey, Maddie, John Dietz, following up as promised. How are you? Is there anything I can do for you? That's it. The longest period of time I was here was three years and 89 calls. What about if they said to bring me a buyer? Sure. And leave you. I would love to bring you a buyer. The problem is I don't have the right buyer. Can I share with you why I haven't found the right buyer yet? Can I? Sure. No one's calling me about your house. And the reason no one's calling me about your home is because I'm not marketing your home. You see, I'm selling houses, but I'm selling other people's homes. That's a great yes. <laughs> Okay. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Now, you're going to eventually reach a point where the seller gets serious about selling their home. That's what this dotted line is. It's usually one to two weeks away from the date they list their home. Could be two to three weeks. Don't get hung up in that, okay? They're getting serious about selling their home and Diane, it's John Dietz, I'm not selling my house. Diane, it's John Dietz, I'm not selling my house. John Dietz, it's Diane, it's John Dietz. I'm not selling my house. Diane, it's John Dietz. Wow, I'm glad you called. I was just thinking it might be time to list this house. Does four o'clock worker would five be better for you? Did she change her mind? No, she made a new decision based on new information. What's that new information? I don't know. It could be a lot of different things. 
But the point here is, if I say yes to the appointment, then I have an opportunity to eventually have them say yes to a listing appointment. If I say no, because I'm only going on listing appointments and I'm judging away opportunity, this day never happens. If I follow up forever, they might say yes. If I give up anywhere from here to here, I'm not gonna get the listing. I could follow up for three months, three months and two weeks and say, this isn't working. They're never gonna sell their home. They're not realistic. I'm gonna take them off my follow-up list. I'm not calling them anymore. And then the next week there's a sign in their front yard and then it's listed for $50,000 less than what they were asking because somebody else followed up forever. I'm completely unattached to the outcome. These are just activities and I have blinders on. I don't hear noise, I don't hear any negativity. I reject rejection. No is not a word that lives in my vocabulary. I am going to follow up forever and it works. And to Evan's question, does this stuff really work? I listed 12 to 15 homes every month doing this. All right, talk to me. Hey guys, for just for one second, I'm gonna stop record on that.